hello, I'm Martin Poulet. I'm the director of the CAR-T programme at University College London, and I'm also the chief scientific officer and founder of, of Autolus. Um, today I'm going to be talking about advances in CAR-T for the application um, in B acute lymphoblastic leukaemia. Um, so we know that CAR-T cell therapy directed against CD19 can work in BALL, but there remain, I think, three main challenges. The first one is that of toxicity. So patients with BALL who receive CD19 CAR-T cell therapy appear to be particularly prone to getting immunotoxicity, by which I mean cytokine release syndrome and CAR-related um, re neurotoxicity. And this seems to be higher incidence than, for example, in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, and it tends to be higher and more severe in adults um, compared with children. So that's the first problem. Then the second problem is, 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 is really that of sustaining response. So in most patients receiving CD19 CAR for acute lymphoblastic leukemia go into remission, uh, but th that, that's not really the main challenge now. The main challenge is keeping them into remission, keeping them in remission and keeping them in remission so they don't need a, 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 a consolidative allograft. And there are two main problems there. The first one is that you need long-term engraftment of CAR-T in, in BALL. So you don't, in the diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, if you get an engraftment for a short number of months and the patient is in, is in a metabolic remission, generally speaking, the patient will stay there. But in BALL, it's quite different. Um, you need engraftment for a long period. I don't think we know exactly how long, but I think it's reasonable to say that we need engraftment for at least a year, if not longer. And what you see in patients who lose their CAR-T engraftment is their B-cells come back, their MRD comes back, and then they get a a frank relapse. So that's the, the second challenge, long-term engraftment of CAR T cells. And then the ter third challenge is related to antigen loss. Um, so we know that um, with CAR T cell therapy, you can get um, a pretty significant proportion of patients ending up with CD19 negative escape. And if you sequence their disease after relapse, you can see that the CD19 gene is disrupted. So this is a, a you know at a genomic level disruption of CD19. Um, how did this is probably the most common cause of treatment failure in, in, in children with BALL. In our adult study, the all 19 study, which we presented at the SOHO meeting, it still happens, but it's a little bit less than, than, than in children, probably a little bit less than we expected. And there, I think, will be the second cause of, of treatment failure, with, with failure of engraftment being the first. So those are really the three things that, 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 that we, you know, we are, we're trying to solve. Um, and in the UCL, we're approaching this in a sort of a stepwise um, fashion. So the first innovation we did was around the CD19 receptor. So most CD19 receptors to date have used a high affinity single chain. So actually nearly all of them use a single chain derived from the FMC63 antibody, very high affinity binder. And this means that the T cell engages with the target cell and for a very long period of time, probably much longer than is actually needed for the T cell to, to deliver a a, you know, a, a lethal signal to the, to the target cell. And this results in overactivation of the, the T cells per kill and also exhaustion of the T cells, which leads to toxicity and then also shorter um, persistence of the CAR T cells. So we designed a receptor um, called CAT19 and the product is called Auto1. And here the receptor is tuned so that the binding kinetic between the receptor and the CD19 antigen is very short. This is much more physiological. It's much more like a normal T cell interaction with a peptide MHC. And then this results in less inflammation per kill. So the T cell comes along, kills the target cell, and then moves on very quickly. Um, so this causes less inflammation for the same number of, of tumor cells killed, but also the T cell gets less exhausted. So we tested this receptor, the CAT19 auto one receptor in a pediatric study. Um, that we published um, in Nature Medicine in 2019, Garash and Adal. And this showed us really, we we're very happy to see the results from this because it showed us what we hoped to see, which is longer in graft and the less toxicity. And we brought this forward in the all car 19 study in, in, in adults. So that addresses, at least in part, you know, the, 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 the problem of toxicity to some extent and also improves persistence. The next problem then is, 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 is CD19 negative escape. And there the obvious thing to do is to target a second antigen. Um, because then the tumor has to randomly mutate two antigens to escape if you target two antigens at the same time. So there we've do, we're focusing on the obvious second antigen, which is CD22. So CD22 is an early to late B cell antigen that's expressed a little bit after CD19 and is expressed on most cases of BALL. Um, and the way we're approaching that is by co-transducing um, a CD22 receptor with, with CAT19. And we're trying that in children first. So we're about to test this in, in, in our pediatric patients first. Um, and hopefully what we'll see is um, long-term engraftment of both CD19 and CD22 co-expressing cells, re receptor expressing cells. And 
a reduction or an elimination of CD19 negative escape. Um, it's fair to say that CD22 targeting has been challenging because CD22 is a very bulky antigen and it's difficult to make a good immunological synapse when you're targeting with a receptor and also it's expressed at lower density um, than, 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 CD9, than, than, than CD19. So we put a huge amount of effort into making a very sensitive um, CD22 receptor we hope will, 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 will solve, will overcome th this difficulty with this antigen. Looking to the future then, I think we can still, there still is a, a, some work to be done on actually improving um, the manufacturing process so we, so we get even longer term engraftment. And then I think looking further into the future, there are approaches where we can make off the shelf of fully allogeneic cells. Although I think it's fair to say that in BALL as opposed to diffuse large B cell lymphoma, this is particularly challenging because we need these long term, we do these um, allogeneic cells in theory, at least to engraft for a very long period of time, which obviously because of allo re rejection is quite a difficult um, thing to achieve. So in a nutshell, that's what's new in CAR-T for BALL and where the, I think the future will, will, will be going. Thank you.